This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I am so thrilled to be back with a new story. Things have been quite loud, which has made it challenging to sit down on my hard metal stool and record a story for you. There were weeks, weeks of road construction. Then the frogs came. There were so many. They must have been attending a professional conference of some kind. Oh, there were the concerts. Then the studio spiders got into some kind of competition over who could type emails the fastest. And when the bagpipe playing goats showed up, I really reached my limit. It was madness, I tell you. But finally, finally, it is quiet enough for me to settle in and tell you a story. It's called Little Hedgehog Goes to the Sea. Take it away, Ivy. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Mr. Hedgehog was enjoying a cup of tea in the kitchen when Little Hedgehog and her best friend, Bibi, emerged wearing bathing suits, sandals, and wide-brimmed hats. Mr. Hedgehog looked back and forth between his tiny, prickly daughter and her best friend, whose big eyes shined with anticipation. What is all this stuff? Little Hedgehog and Bibi looked at one another and their eyes sparkled. Their prickles seemed to pop out from excitement. Oh, Dad. Ramon's uncle's neighbor's sister's aunt's harpsichord teacher used to go to the beach every year, but recently developed a seaweed allergy, and she had to give away her beach essentials so she can move forward in life with confidence. She does not want to be reminded of her inability to wade into the surf of the sea, Mr. Hedgehog. So we said yes to her stuff. We said yes. And we picked all of it up last night. Under a full moon. One of Mr. Hedgehog's eyes twitched, but he said nothing. Little Hedgehog and BB smiled. Dad thought that if he remained silent, he may never have to learn the entirety of his daughter's plans. Bibi broke the silence. Mr. Hedgehog, my mom made me promise to remind you that the paws in our family are overly sensitive to the exfoliative power of sand, and that, oh, wait, I have a paw written note from her. Bibi pulled a tiny note from her prickles. Thanks, Bibi. Mr. Hedgehog said, reaching for the paper. But Bibi had already started reading it. Dear Mr. Hedgehog, thank you again for the surplus nettles you left at our burrow. I am in constant awe of your hedge rooting abilities, no doubt honed in your younger years. That reminds me of a quote by the great. Bibi continued reading for several minutes. It was incredible how many words her mom was able to fit on such a small slip of paper. Finally, she reached the end of the message. In summation, it is optimal that Bibi's paws endure no more than 27 minutes of sand exposure before taking a break of no less than 13.6 minutes. This figure comes from a series of experiments conducted in the last three weeks. Sincerely and with great neighborly admiration and respect, Ms. Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog's dad peered at Bibi. Bibi smiled. Little Hedgehog stepped forward. And now we go to the sea. With a flourish, Bibi pulled a tiny guitar from her prickles and began to play. Little Hedgehog twirled and danced around her dad. Dad stared at Bibi. You play guitar. Oh, Dad, Little Hedgehog said as she shimmied by. Bibi taught herself to play guitar almost two years ago. Where have you been? Dad glanced around. Where is that percussion coming from? Little Hedgehog did a final twirl and finished her dance with both feet planted firmly on the ground and both paws splayed out above her head, which was thrown back 
for additional drama. Dad waited for Little Hedgehog to come out of her stance. She held it for another beat, then smiled. Little Hedgehog. Yes, Dad? We do not live near the sea. I'm aware of that. We were previously aware of that, Mr. Hedgehog. B.B. confirmed as she tucked her guitar out of sight. She reemerged from the shadows holding a music player. She and Little Hedgehog exchanged meaningful nods, and Little Hedgehog added an exaggerated wink. Little Hedgehog suddenly and dramatically curled herself into a prickly ball on the ground. What's happening? Dad muttered. Bibi hit play on the music player. Mr. Hedgehog, you have identified a logistical issue, specifically that we live nowhere near the sea. Walking there would take weeks. Months! Little Hedgehog chimed in, popping up from her crouch stance and startling Mr. Hedgehog enough that tea went sloshing from his cup. We considered a hot air balloon, but last month our friend Wilbur boarded a hot air balloon intending to visit the sea, and it turns out they are rather difficult to steer. We've been getting postcards from the desert ever since. I am so confused, Dad said. Okay, BB, reveal the plan. Mr. Hedgehog, we have acquired train tickets from a reputable vendor. Train tickets? How did you pay for train tickets? We bartered, Dad. The ticket seller was expected to give a heartfelt speech at his sister's wedding. He was experiencing profound writer's block. I offered to craft his speech for him. It's going to pull at various heartstrings. Dad sighed. Okay. Little Hedgehog produced three shiny paper train tickets and held them so they caught the light of the lamp above. BB beamed. Dad looked skeptical and tired. How was he already tired? Little Hedgehog noticed her dad's face. She grinned at Bibi. Then she held up one of the tickets and slowly began to fold it. Just before she creased it fully with her teensy paw, Dad jumped up from his seat. His teacup toppled and spilled across the table. Little Hedgehog, what are you doing to that train ticket? Oh, this train ticket? I'm folding it into a hat. Each of us can have an origami train ticket hat. Mr. Hedgehog suddenly felt strangely protective of the train tickets he'd know nothing about and had a moment ago felt rather coerced into using. Little Hedgehog, we need those tickets for the train so that we can get to the ocean. Don't fold them. Little Hedgehog and BB shared a significant look. Gee, Dad, you are really set on going to the sea, aren't you? It would clearly upset you if our train tickets were creased to the extent that the information they held was rendered illegible, potentially endangering our admittance to the train. Mr. Hedgehog blinked. I'll just tuck these away safely so we can absolutely, positively use them to travel to the sea. Little Hedgehog and Bibi grinned. Dad peered at his prickly daughter. Little Hedgehog. Yes, Dad? Are you quite sure you want to go to the sea? By the time we get there, it will be nearly morning. You two will be very tired. We'll nap on the train. It is our current greatest wish to go to the sea, Mr. Hedgehog. Okay, fine. We can go to the sea. Yay! Yay. By midnight, Little Hedgehog and BB were in line to board the train. Their neighbor, Ms. Periwinkle, happened to be traveling to the sea as well. She was looking forward to seeing dolphins. It is my life's greatest dream to see dolphins. The line moved forward, and they stepped up to the train conductor, who scowled at them. I'm sorry, you may not bring living creatures aboard the train. We are living creatures. I am a very alive creature, Little Hedgehog said. I am living as well. However, my mom says I was very still as a baby, and I only moved my paws once per hour. I was often mistaken for a doll by neighbors who stopped by between my hourly paw movements. The train conductor peered at Bibi and Little Hedgehog. 
She glanced at her watch. No extra living creatures. Specifically, no living snacks, the conductor said, glaring at Ms. Periwinkle. Ms. Periwinkle is not a snack. She's our neighbor, Little Hedgehog said, beaming. I am no one's snack, Ms. Periwinkle shouted. Ms. Periwinkle was a worm. The train conductor narrowed her eyes. She was an owl. Owls do, on occasion, eat worms and hedgehogs. Except, of course, owls who have sworn oaths to never eat animals. The conductor was not one of those owls. But it would have been highly unprofessional for her to eat a customer at work. So she simply narrowed her big eyes at them. As a worm, Ms. Periwinkle was positively armless. So Little Hedgehog reached down and pulled Ms. Periwinkle's ticket out of her sock pocket. She only had one pocket, so it was easy to find. The conductor scowled but accepted the ticket. Dad appeared, looking weary after wrestling their luggage into the back of the train. Everything okay? he asked, taking in the scene before him. Everything is perfect, Dad, Little Hedgehog trilled. Dad nodded, and they boarded the train. Ms. Periwinkle nodded goodbye and disappeared into the quiet car to do some reading. The train ride was uneventful, except for the part when the train had to slow to a stop so that a group of llamas could cross the tracks. So sorry, the leader of the llamas said as he gingerly stepped over the rail tracks. We had to be in a panel at the annual Llama Culinary Expressions Conference tomorrow. We cannot dare to be late. Little Hedgehog and Bibi waved through the open windows of the train. I can't wait to be an adult so that I, too, can attend professional conferences, Bibi said, her big eyes shining in the moonlight. It was six in the morning when the train finally slowed. Little Hedgehog had fallen asleep during the ride. Bibi nudged her awake. Little Hedgehog. Hmm, banana peels. Little Hedgehog. Oh, sorry, Bibi. <sighs> I was dreaming about compost. I do that sometimes. Little Hedgehog, we've arrived at the sea. We are at the sea? We are at the sea. They peered out the windows, but all they could see were the tops of the dunes. They'd have to walk over them to get to the ocean. Anyone want a toasted lima bean sandwich? Mr. Hedgehog said, carefully unwrapping a sandwich and taking a bite. No thanks, Dad. No thank you, Mr. Hedgehog. Little Hedgehog and I are planning to eat some kelp. Eh, suit yourself. The train came to a complete stop. Dozens of animals streamed out. Ms. Periwinkle was one of the first, somehow proceeding across the sand, no doubt itching to get a look at distant dolphins. Little Hedgehog, Bibi, and Dad unloaded their belongings and ambled over the dunes. They blinked in the sunlight, unused to being up this late in the day. As they reached the peak of the dunes, they were hit with salty air, the sounds of seagulls, and the gentle crashing of the waves. Grinning, they took a few more paw steps. And there it was, the ocean. A seagull immediately swooped down and plucked the sandwich out of Mr. Hedgehog's paw. It landed a few yards away and tossed the sandwich into the sand. Lima bean sandwich, seriously? Mr. Hedgehog scowled and unwrapped another lima bean sandwich. They all took in the view. There were animals everywhere, dotting the beach with their towels, blazing in the morning sun. In the water, an intrepid badger was showing off in a surfboard. Ooh, isn't he talented? A trio of porcupines drifted along in a kayak a bit further out. Ripples of laughter drifted over from a group of giggling prairie dogs playing tag. 
A rabbit tossed a ball into the waves, and his pet mouse went bounding in to fetch it. A large, humorless toad sat perched on the lifeguard stand, hollering every once in a while, No horsing around! The horses, leaping through the surf, scowled at him. Little Hedgehog and BB gazed at everything with big eyes twinkling with a spirit of adventure. Mr. Hedgehog opened his mouth to take a bite of his new lima bean sandwich, but a seagull swooped down and snatched it from his paws. The seagull landed several yards away and spat the sandwich onto the sand. Lima bean sandwich? Are you kidding me? Mr. Hedgehog blinked. I'm going to go find something to eat. You two stay out of trouble, okay? Okay, Dad. We will be on our best behavior, Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog ambled away, grumbling to himself about his lost sandwich. Little Hedgehog and BB looked at one another and beamed. Let the exploration begin. Their first stop was a snack at the kelp stand. Mmm, delicious. Tastes a little like my cousin Felix's stewed leeks. Next, they walked along the surf, letting their tiny paws soak in the cool water. So refreshing, BB. Indeed. Something bumped against Little Hedgehog's foot, and she glanced down. BB, you will never guess what I found, Little Hedgehog said, quickly tucking the object behind her prickles. Did you find a lost boot? No. Did you find the remnants of a sunken ship? No. Did you find a message in a bottle? No. Oh, wait. Actually, yes. Good guess, Phoebe. Thank you. Little Hedgehog withdrew the bottle from behind her prickles, and together they fished the message out of it. Read it, Phoebe. Phoebe carefully unfurled the message and blinked. It is an ad for ghost crab castles. Apparently, they are located just 20 paces away. Hmm. Clever marketing. Oh, BB, I've always wanted to visit ghost crab castles. Remember those radio ads that always came on? I remember. Have you ever dreamed of owning your very own castle for a day? Scamper, don't amble, down to Ghost Crab Castles, where you'll get the royal treatment you deserve. Your castle awaits. Ghost Crab Castles. Ghost Crab Castles. Warning, your castle may be washed away without notice. Ghost Crab Castles is not responsible for any loss of life or paw. Ghost Ghost Crab Crab Castles Castles is not responsible for for any any loss of life life or or paw. Little Hedgehog and BB giggled. Little Hedgehog tucked the bottle into her satchel, and they trudged over the sand, their tiny sandals flapping as they went. They yawned a few times, as it was quite late in the day. The air smelled of seawater. A breeze drifted over them. It was a perfect beach day. A large sign loomed above them as they arrived at Ghost Crab Castle's. Your castle awaits, B.B. read. A ghost crab suddenly emerged from beneath the sand, startling the two tiny hedgehogs. Oh my, we didn't see you there. Your camouflage is superb. The ghost crab's eyes stood up above its head, as if locked in an eternal look of surprise. The ghost crab said nothing but gestured with an outstretched claw the exact color of the sand. Little Hedgehog and BB grinned at each other and followed the ghost crab as it skittered across the beach. They gazed at the towering sandcastles all around them. Some had towers with pointed roofs. Some were simply a series of mounds, curved and sloping downward into the sand. Each one had been abandoned, by people who'd become too bored or too sunburned and had left them vacant. Now, creatures of all kinds lazed in the castles. They passed one that was simply a series of cylindrical columns with a little tide pool in the center. 
A dwarf rabbit in blue swim trunks sipped lemonade in the shadow of the columns. Next, they scampered by a castle made of elaborate tunnels. A mouse slept noisily in one of the tunnels, seeming quite at home. Finally, the ghost crab came to an abrupt halt in front of a high wall of sand and extended its claw. Little Hedgehog and BB glanced at one another and smiled. They thanked the ghost crab and it disappeared into the sand. They crept around the wall, their eyes gleaming. They both gasped when they saw their very own sand castle. <gasps> Baby, it's beautiful. Intriguing. Amazing. Structurally sound. Stupendous. Above average. It was, truly, an impressive sandcastle. The sun was high in the noontime sky as Little Hedgehog and Bibi tramped through their new lodgings. There were towers and tunnels and slopes. There was a little tide pool with some resident sand crabs who tipped their little hats in greeting the two hedgehogs. Good day to you. Nice to see you this afternoon. Hello. Pleasure to meet you. The pleasure is ours. They continued touring the castle until they reached... (gasps) Baby, it's our throne. They looked at each other and their eyes sparkled. They scampered over and climbed up onto their throne. It was a ledge of sand, big enough for the both of them. From their perch, they could gaze out at the endless sea. Little Hedgehog yawned. Little Hedgehog. Yes, Phoebe? Look at where the sea meets the sky. Doesn't it just fill you with a sense of eternity? It does, Bibi. Doesn't it make you contemplate how small we truly are on this vast planet? Hmm. Doesn't it activate a sense of... Bibi looked over. Little Hedgehog was asleep. Bibi settled in beside her. As she, too, drifted off, she heard Miss Periwinkle in the distance. Dolphins, there! In the distance, it was my life's greatest dream to see dolphins. Hours later, Little Hedgehog felt herself being nudged. She blinked her eyes open and saw her dad, who was standing above her, smiling. Oh, oh, hi, Dad. Hey, sleepyhead. Bibi was still asleep, mumbling numbers. Seven, nine... Three, two, Little Hedgehog and Mr. Three, Hedgehog prodded BB. Eight, mm, seven. Her eyes opened. BB, you were mumbling in your sleep. I was dreaming about pie. <gasps> I love pie. Mushroom pecan is my favorite. Actually, I was dreaming about the number pie, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Oh, okay. Mr. Hedgehog raised his eyebrows, but said nothing. Little Hedgehog and BB took in their surroundings. It was dusk. The sun sank low in the sky. The sand all around them was damp and flat. Their throne, their entire castle, had washed away with the tide. Hmm. Hmm. But they didn't have much time to contemplate the ephemeral nature of beautiful things. Mr. Hedgehog began walking, purposefully, away from the sea. Come on, there's something we need to see before we go. Little Hedgehog and BB took a last look at their lost kingdom. They glanced once more at the seam connecting the water with the sky. Little Hedgehog pulled the bottle from her satchel and carefully filled it with some sand. Bibi looked at her curiously. For my collection, Bibi. Then they ambled after Mr. Hedgehog. They walked for what felt like forever, over the dunes and beyond. Finally, they found Mr. Hedgehog. They saw why he'd hurried. 
The sun was setting over the bay. Bibi pulled her guitar from beneath her prickles and began to play. Mr. Hedgehog did not know how Bibi had hidden her guitar all this time or where that percussion was coming from. It didn't matter. It was late. They'd missed the train home and would have to wait for the next one. For the moment, all there was to do was to watch the sun settle against the water, painting the sky with blazing pink and orange streaks as it went. Soon, all would be dark, and the stars would reveal themselves. But in the brief time they had, they savored the sunset. I love the ocean. There's something about looking out at the vastness, the unendingness of it, that has always given me a sense of peace. It's a place where everything is impermanent and changes come multiple times a day. The tide goes in and out, sand castles rise and are swept away, and your footprints last just a moment. At the ocean, you have to live in the moment because that's all there is. But then you look out and you see where the water meets the sky. As everything around you might shift with the winds and tides, the ocean itself remains through it all, forever connecting with the sky above. To me, that mix of fickleness and constancy is part of the magic of a day at the beach. I really wanted to give that experience to Little Hedgehog and BB. I hope you loved it. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house technical director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to Ivy for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to Gemma, Leo, Ava, Lola, and Parker for the professional quality sound effects used in this story. And thank you, as always, for listening in. (laughs) 